Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us here on DeadCat LiveCat for this interview with Tracy Forrest. DeadCat LiveCat is an online quantum computing magazine founded by law firms BLG in Canada, Marks and Clerk in UK, Schindler's in South Africa, and Zuber Lawler in the US. We're attorneys, but we're also scientists, engineers, and futurists focused on the likelihood that quantum computing coupled with AI are going to fundamentally change our world within two decades. My name is Tina Decker. I'm a student at law at Borden Lanner Gervais, which is a Canadian law firm with offices across Canada. I'm a part of the intellectual property group at BLG's office located in Ottawa. Today, we have Tracy Forrest here to tell us what it takes to innovate in the quantum field and commercialize quantum technologies. Tracy is the director for the Transformative Quantum Technologies Program, known as TQT, located in Waterloo, Ontario. Tracy recently coordinated the Quantum for Health Design Challenge in Waterloo, and she is also an executive board member of the Q for Climate Initiative. Now, as a personal note, I actually met Tracy about five, year, five years ago when I was a graduate student at the Institute for Quantum Computing, and I was supported by the TQT program. Tracy was the first person to introduce me to patent agents and lawyers as I pivoted my career into intellectual property law. So I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to welcome Tracy here for a discussion about quantum technologies. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here, Tina, and, and great to connect with you again. So to start, can you tell us about TQT and its mission to deliver on the quantum promise? Sure. Yeah, the, the Transformative Quantum Technologies Program, or TQT, at the University of Waterloo aims to take quantum mechanics from a laboratory curiosity to an impactful device. So TQT builds upon the strengths of the, the Institute for Quantum Computing uh, and brings together quantum researchers across campus and beyond to accelerate quantum research and commercialization. Professor David Corey is the visionary behind the program and serves as the principal investigator. And I serve as the director and together we form the leadership of TQT. A large part of my role is focused on knowledge mobilization. So increasing our researchers capacity to take their novel innovations and connect them to early adopters that need them. And more broadly to build viable pathways to realize commercial and societal benefits. And just to share a few stats on the program, at present there are about 70 projects underway, generating significant scientific outcomes and impact in many fields. Uh, two large simulator projects represent a key investment area for TQT, arrays of trapped ions and arrays of Rydberg atoms. The program has attracted four new faculty and a research associate to the University of Waterloo, uh, and they are leading much of these simulation efforts. And recruitment efforts are underway to fill two more faculty slots. Um, overall, TQT has uh, supported close to 500 researchers and 50 faculty in developing and delivering quantum technologies. Mm -hmm. So anyone who has a need for quantum can come here to connect with this community and access a full suite of open access tools and resources. Wow, that's amazing. So what types of quantum programs and initiatives do you lead or participate in through TQT? Yeah, I'm involved in several quantum initiatives. Uh, one involves quantum for health, which is a rapidly emerging field with uh, innovation stories coming out of the lab today and where TQT has placed recent emphasis in the form of a quantum for health design challenge. This is an initiative open to all members of the University of Waterloo to meet exciting new quantum technologies with pressing needs in health. And outcomes may include more accessible healthcare, uh, technology enabling personalized medicine and high performance diagnostics such as wearable sensors and medical imaging. There are also opportunities in structural biology, quantum simulation, computation and communication. Um, the focus is to bring forth ideas that expand the potential reach of quantum technology so that everyone everywhere can attain the highest level of health. And outside of TQT, uh, a separate initiative I help lead is Quantum for Climate, which gathers the research and industry communities together around quantum and climate sciences with the aim of developing new insights into how we may reduce the pace and impact of climate change. So very, very important pressing challenge that uh, we're looking to bring the quantum community around. Um, and, you know, the, the project focuses on identifying new opportunities for research and on the development of quantum approaches to problems in climate sciences. Um, I should mention the group is run, it's a volunteer uh, run um, uh, entity and, it, and it's uh, run by individuals from various organizations such as Intel, NASA, uh, Zapata, Institute Quantique at Sherbrooke, 
and, and other academic institutions. And, and we've developed a preliminary assessment of where one might look to apply quantum technologies in addressing climate change and continue to organize international workshops in this arena. Um, and to briefly mention, I also serve on the executive committee of the Quantum Collaboratory, Co which is uh, a unique research and development environment that spans three nodes in Canada. Mm -hmm. Um, hopefully there will be an opportunity to, to expand on quantum collab later in our, in our conversation, perhaps as we discuss quantum innovation pathways. That's wonderful. So you talked a little bit about using quantum for climate change, but more generally, why should industry care about quantum? Like what's going to change with a quantum solution? Oh, great. Thanks for asking me, Tina. Quantum offers a new paradigm for the development of technology. So where there's an opportunity to apply extraordinary levels of efficiency, security, and precision, quantum will play a transformational role. Quantum mechanics enables efficiencies and correlations that aren't possible in the classical world. So with quantum technology, we can achieve orders of magnitude improvements in sensitivity, selectivity, or resource efficiency. We can communicate more securely, enable more efficient sensing, and provide a new model for computation through quantum correlations. So the power of quantum allows for dramatic step function uh, transformation. And it has the potential to profoundly impact significant applications in areas such as medical technologies, ICT, navigation, energy, defense, sensing, and, and many more areas. Um, a significant competitive advantage awaits for those industries that choose to explore and exploit the power of quantum. So there are a lot of different applications that we're seeing for quantum technologies. You mentioned sensing among other things. It's not just quantum computing. And from your experience at TQT and through these different initiatives and programs that you've had a chance to um, work with, you've really had an opportunity to see these proposed use cases for quantum technologies and quantum computing. So in which areas do you think that quantum technologies will have the most positive impact? Well, the discovery process has just begun. So quantum allows us to solve problems and create products that would otherwise be impossible. So it'll broadly impact every industry and sector. Uh, if we take a high level view of the opportunity landscape, we would see, for example, Quantum enables manufacturing measurements and materials discovery and development. Uh, it enables enhanced scientific tools and techniques for research and education. It enables broad applications in health, spanning personalized medicine, high performance diagnostics, and imaging to structural biology. Uh, quantum enables accurate time stamping, which could be useful in finance. And of course, it has profound impact in the ICT sector, bringing new models for computation, enabling secure communications, allowing us to simulate real physical systems, and, and vastly improving the efficiency of conventional electronics. In defense and mobility, quantum brings the ability for covert detection of stealth targets and, and navigation and positioning tools for GPS denied environments. And in energy, quantum enables lossless power transmission and high efficiency energy conversion. And finally, if we look at the areas of environmental monitoring, quantum provides highly sensitive and selective chemical sensing, wireline tools and remote sensors. But to, to get back to your question on where quantum will have the most positive impact, you'll have to look at least initially where there is no solution today and where having the solution would be highly valued. So we find many of these use cases based on quantum sensing in health and in defense. So if we were to take a look just um, at quantum for health, so I mentioned this earlier, we're running a competition in this area. This is a rapidly emerging field with a surprising range of activities. There are groups all around the world advancing quantum solutions around health. And if you look at just a set of activities based out of the University of Waterloo, uh, supported by TQT, you would see uh, Cohandel's development of a quantum-enabled SARS-CoV-2 sensor. Uh, you'd see Kalina Murthy's molecular dynamics exploration of uh, a SARS-CoV-2 mutagenesis and Pushin's exploration of human discrimination of berry phases. 
And in staying on this theme of quantum for health supported by TQT, you will note uh, Badakian's work in magnetic resonance force microscopy or, or Corey's demonstration of the advantages possible through engineering coherent cavity interactions and spin measurements. These advances are enabling of new, more precise and sensitive characterization methods for structural biology, for example. Uh, we'd also see Beseva's optical coherence tomography system for in vivo non-invasive imaging of the eye. And uh, in collaboration with uh, Professor Reimer, they are developing a novel infrared camera based in quantum sensors. Mm -hmm. And the applications here include early diagnostics and monitoring of potentially blinding diseases. And, and finally, to note, there's been a new set of optics experiments conducted uh, in collaboration with the School of Optometry that has resulted in the discovery of a novel optical state that directly mimics the structure of a healthy macula. And this discovery is being used to develop potential quantum sensor for early macular degeneration uh, with trials underway in two clinics and, and paving the way for earlier and more accurate diagnostics. So you can see a wide away, array of positive impactful use cases emerging from the lab. And we've just been talking about health. There are also projects already that are the lab and positioned for commercial impact. Um, you can take, for example, the, the superconducting detectors for structural biology with the startup HiQ. Um, you can look at the high efficiency single photon detectors with the startup single quantum systems. And more recently, electronic sensors for detecting pathogens uh, in human or environmental samples with the, a startup called BioGraphSense. And if you were just to, to zoom out of Waterloo and project uh, into the distant future, uh, quantum technologies will find positive impact where they enable us to advance far enough that um, high temperature superconductors are a reality so that we no longer have to live with electricity, grid transmission and distribution losses. And where and they allow us to advance far enough that the efficiency of solar power conversion is twice that that it is today. And where they replace the movement of charge with movement of spin, resulting in a substantial drop in the energy cost of computation through developments in spintronics. And this would yield a step function change, meaning that your battery would last 600 times longer or you'd be able to compute 600 times faster. So quantum really does touch every sector and can be truly transformative. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, even just as you are saying within the health sector, there's so many different applications of quantum sensors and ways we can apply these technologies. And I think, um, you know, there's a lot of focus on quantum computing, but there's, there's a lot to be had from all quantum technologies. And it's really exciting to hear about these initiatives. That said, I imagine there's some difficulty in trying to establish all of these technologies. So could you tell us a bit about what some of the greatest barriers are to realizing these applications and use cases? Sure, yeah. So, you know, the biggest barrier really is that classical technologies are quite good. They set the bar really high. Yeah. Um, there needs to be a genuine need for a quantum solution that justifies the extra expense and complexity. And typically, this opportunity presents itself where there is no solution today, and, and the solution would address a, an important problem. So, you know, the type of problems that a, a company might go to business if they, they can't find the solution. And these types of problems can be difficult to uncover because it requires that you speak with someone who is deeply knowledgeable of their field and who can point to opportunities where there are no solutions today. So they've, they've done their homework, they've done a global scan, and also that they are capable to partner in the development of the technology. Um, also, quantum will outperform classical technology when it reaches a sufficient level of complexity and precision. And we still need more complexity and more precision so that the differential between classical and quantum is big enough to justify the solution. And the differential typically comes with a price tag and this needs to be appropriate for the application. Uh, you'll also find barriers uh, connected to the specific areas of positive impact um, that the quantum technology is targeting. So take, for example, the environment. Climate change is a pressing global challenge, but is there a large enough market today to bring sophisticated solutions for methane monitoring or remote sensing of organic carbon in soils or other measurements of significance for earth monitoring? Many of the tasks people are imagining today for environment are not amenable for such an expensive solution. 
And this drives you to health and defense. And many quantum systems rely here on cryogenics and, and which some would say is limiting in terms of portability and affordability. But even if cryogenics is not deemed an issue for a particular application, there are physical platforms, albeit nascent, that do not require millikelvin temperatures, such as nitrogen vacancy centers and diamond or semiconductor quantum optical systems. So the good news is that there is a viable pathway today for these sectors. That's really good to hear. <clears throat> I was particularly interested by um, the example that you mentioned earlier about the batteries and you know having that step function improvement. Um, you mentioned earlier uh, in your response about doing this environmental scan and sort of talking with other people to understand and find these problems that have no solution. So that sounds like there's going to need to be a lot of a lot more collaboration between fields that maybe don't necessarily collaborate very often uh, historically. And so what do you think is necessary to see this greater collaboration between um, different fields and also between even like different quantum companies to achieve these goals, like addressing climate change um, and solving these, these very complex problems? Yeah, that's an important question. Um, and, you know, just a minor note, really, just to say that when we refer to quantum companies, um, it's not always a quantum company that's offering a, a quantum solution. Um, in fact, for many of them, quantum is ancillary into their core business or part of their skunk works division, especially when we think of multinationals or conglomerates. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about these times is that the spectrum of large industry to university spin-outs to academic research groups, they are all pushing the frontier of quantum R&D at the same time. And one avenue for greater collaboration is for the community to converge on a set of promising use cases in climate or another high impact field where they can decide to cooperate or collaborate around the pre-commercial aspects in order to drive the development of a new market or perhaps steer an existing market. Um, we see this in the energy environment sustainability space where the successful launch of an, an environmental feature requires all companies to be on board um, so that it, it forces the customer to move in a targeted direction. And you could look at the movement taken by large companies towards less packaging through concentrated detergent, for example. Um, the Quantum Colab, this connected resource across Canada that provides access to the full suite of tools necessary to advance upon the quantum innovation cycle, is one way to build connections across the community and may serve to drive these types of collaborations. Another approach um, that drives collaboration is taken from the startup world, where you seek incubators helping young ventures connect with one another through co-working spaces, peer networking, and access to shared resources such as labs and, uh, and admin support. Quantum companies that coalesce around an incubator approach, they might find it more natural to collaborate. And I guess along similar lines, companies that are open to learning and expanding meaningful engagement with stakeholders may find it easier to collaborate around complex and thorny problems such as climate change. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So shifting gears a little bit more to the topic of innovation, how would you say that TQT innovates in the quantum world? Well, quantum is new. It's, it's not intuitive and it demands new approaches to device development and including specialized tools and processes. And advancing our understanding and control of quantum technologies requires a new innovation cycle um, that, that brings quantum engineering to materials growth and to device physics. So in light of this, TQT has created a unique quantum innovation cycle to drive development towards impactful applications. This quantum innovation cycle is a, a continuous cycle of discovery and development, which includes quantum materials growth, materials characterization, device fabrication, integration, device testing, and applications. And the cycle leads to improved materials, new devices, and new computers. Um, as you might appreciate, given your background, quantum devices must be built from quantum materials. And these materials must be free of observers that would collapse the quantum state to a classical reality. So they need to be clean, and they need to support quantum coherence. And for this, we need ultra clean special purpose instruments that allow us to control defects in structure. Once we have a grown a quantum material, we need to uh, characterization tools that enable us to probe the quality of the materials and optimize growth conditions. 
And the tools themselves must be quantum systems. Uh, next in the cycle, we need to be able to fabricate quantum devices in such a way that we can precisely place nanoscale objects on macroscopic surfaces so that the noise um, and that the noise and the classical control elements do not destroy the quantum nature of the materials. And once we've fabricated a quantum device, we need specialized environments for testing so that environmental noise does not destroy the fragile quantum state. And this can, can include operations at a very low temperatures, extremely low temperatures, um, extremely small or large magnetic fields, and extremely low vibrations. Finally, by getting devices into the hands of uh, users, learning from their experience and integrating that knowledge into the quantum innovation cycle, we can accelerate the path to quantum innovation. And quantum simulation is an example application. It serves to close the cycle through physics simulations that help us gain new insight into quantum effects and the design of new materials. The quantum innovation cycle might also begin with the quantum simulation problem, and that's difficult for, for a classical computer to solve. So for example, problems ranging from quantum materials to, to quantum chromodynamics. Just in the last few years, we've taken this quantum innovation cycle and we made it available to all quantum researchers in Canada and beyond through the Quantum Co-Laboratory, which you've heard me refer to a few times already. Um, the Quantum Co-Lab combines the resources at the University of Waterloo with two other large CFRIF government funded programs. Uh, that's at the University of Sherbrooke and uh, British Columbia through the Canada First Research Excellence Fund. And this unique shared resource for developing, prototyping, and early commercialization of quantum solutions already has close to 500 users across Canada. Uh, it includes a large portion from industry, representing 35 or so um, companies. And it's already attracting industry to Canada and supports the development of new um, Canadian quantum tech and startups. Its mission is to support the broad quantum community in reaching the precision, complexity, and control necessary to really realize the quantum promise. And as I mentioned, there's three nodes across Canada. And so these distributed locations across Canada uh, provide an ease of access to the shared infrastructure. Um, we also provide through the CoLab streamlined training and the benefit of an expert team of specialized technical staff with an easy reach. So the, the integrated capabilities uniquely enable a new set of projects and technology development outcomes that wouldn't otherwise be possible. And because we've developed a curated quantum space for innovators to work in, users do not need to bring a deep quantum expertise to engage. Uh, it's really important to appreciate that innovating in quantum requires different everything, different materials, different manufacturing, different connectivity and in control, just for example. Um, and the, the quantum collab was developed with this in mind to provide the user with resources that can be picked up, and put down the ability to navigate a complex quantum space without having to buy the tools where they don't need to, or necessarily want to invest. So TQT is not alone on this path to quantum innovation. Uh, it's part of the quantum valley, which is a realization of Mike Lazarus' vision to develop a complete quantum science innovation and in enterprise community. And I should also mention TQT maintains a close collaboration with the Neutron Lab at NIST. Um, and this, this is a unique engagement that allows our, our researchers to develop new capabilities uh, for the neutron beam lines there. Uh, and a similar arrangement is in place with uh, the Center for Eye and Vision Research in Hong Kong, where quantum eye projects can be explored in a clinical setting. Um, <clears throat> Finally, I should also mention that we support innovation and spin outs from the TQT program. We connect researchers with patent attorneys and support their provisional filings. Uh, we, we look to increase IPC, IP literacy broadly. And also we serve as a first early customer where there is a scientific or, or educational need. So a lot of facets to, to what we do here in, in quantum and our path to quantum innovation. Yeah, that's really amazing that you've, um, over the years that TQT and the University of Waterloo and these other hubs have really developed this ecosystem to support researchers. And that brings me to my next question, which is about talent. So we know that talent is a, an important issue for the growth of the quantum market. And I mean, you have all of these nice facilities. How do you draw researchers in and how, um, what sort of strategies um, do you think are necessary to bring talent into the quantum field more generally to support innovation? Yeah, um, 
So at TQT, we're invested not only in accelerating quantum technologies, but also in attracting the, the people, the talent that share in, in the vision of a collaborative, diverse community that connects across uh, that, that innovation cycle they just spoke to. And this is to develop improved quantum materials, devices, and world-changing applications. Uh, so, so we do need to find and recruit and retain essential knowledgeable technical staff that have capabilities in materials growth, characterization, device fabrication, and device testing. So to do this, we've reached out across the globe through programs that target equity and diversity and participation. And as a result, we've attracted incredible talent to the University of Waterloo, from researchers to engineers to innovators. Each bring new ideas and contribute to, to highly diverse teams at uh, TQT. These global outreach programs include Quantum Innovators, which is a, a one-week program. And we have two of these, one in science and engineering, uh, one also in computer science and math. And they're aimed at postdocs. And we also have an undergraduate school in experimental quantum information processing, uh, which obviously targets undergrads and takes place in the summertime. We also track master's students uh, through the, the new master's degree in quantum technology, uh, which supports the development of quantum workers who are knowledgeable in quantum physics and engineering. And the program benefits from, uh, we've just recently commissioned this quantum exploration space that houses quantum systems uh, where the students can develop insights and experience. And the cornerstone of the program is a series of three lab experiences where they learn coherent quantum control, quantum photonics, and the use and manufacture of solid state quantum devices. So this quantum exploration space, it's professionally staffed with a PhD scientist and the space is used for a variety of uses. So outreach workshops and training activities. The facilities are state of the art. So this is great for students. They get to experience an environment they wouldn't normally get unless they were in a research lab. And, you know, it allows them to leave with a breadth of uh, rich experiences. Uh, finally, we also engage research associates and technical staff in pursuing focused milestone driven technology development projects. And these target early adopters, they target customers, and there certainly is an emphasis on uh, strategic IP. Uh, it's also worth noting the sizable imprint that uh, the outreach and training offered by uh, the Institute for Quantum Computing at, at Waterloo has um, had around the world. So for example, there are, uh, by estimates, I believe around 7,000 quantum experts worldwide, and uh, roughly 1,600 of those individuals have received some form of training at IQC. Wow, those I, I didn't know those numbers. That's uh, really interesting to hear. Um, and so you've talked about uh, like bringing in some, you know, combining engineers and physics and bringing them together into this workspace to learn. And we touched on this a bit earlier, but maybe we can expand on it a bit more about the role of interdisciplinary collaboration in the quantum innovation process and how important um, these interdisciplinary collaborations are to realizing the full potential of quantum technologies. Yeah, so, uh, so transformative quantum technology, uh, the program, um, its grand challenge outcomes are centered around computation, communication, and sensing. These are being led by interdisciplinary teams. Um, and, you know, through these, through these team efforts, they're providing researchers with important new tools for quantum information science and, and, and putting impactful new devices in the hands of early adopters. And you heard me talk about the collaboration with the School of Optometry um, that's bringing new quantum tools for the diagnosis of macular degeneration. You know, that, that's really thanks to an interdisciplinary type of collaboration. Another example that illustrates the importance of this um, form of collaboration is the open access quantum simulator that uh, professors Crystal Senko and Rajabal Islam are building. So, so they're, they're, their simulator is based on trapped ions, and, and trapped ions are one of the most advanced technologies for quantum computing. It offers multi-qubit control in a universal quantum computing architecture and, and the ability to perform calculations with unprecedented precision. Crystal and Rajabal are constructing a shared trapped ion quantum computing platform. It's called Quantum Ion, and it'll enable the broad and interdisciplinary scientific community to access an advanced quantum computing platform. Um, the goal is to accelerate the discovery of new methods and applications of quantum computing. 
So the quantum ion uh, will make trapped ion hardware more automated. It'll make it more accessible to users, and it'll open up a range of new uh, experiments. And in building the quantum simulator, there are uh, a lot of problems that need to be solved, requiring specialized expertise across a span of disciplines. Uh, you will hear them talk about the need for vacuum engineering the en um, and engineering of optical laser systems to control information processing. Once you have a set of quantum hardware, then there's the need to interface with classical instrumentation and control methods. And one needs systems design to ensure, to ensure that the entire stack of electronic and computer infrastructure is operating as intended. Crystal and Roger are atomic physicists and, and need to connect with electrical computer engineers, mechanical engineers, systems engineers in order to realize their quantum simulator. And as the field becomes more mature and technical challenges more specialized, it becomes even more important to work within an interdisciplinary environment to allow for, for deep expertise within a research group while benefiting from connections that exist across groups. So thank you, Tracy, for um, sharing a little bit about the, the Quantum Ion project. That sounds really interesting, and I'm looking forward to hearing more about that as um, the projects develop around that. Moving on to the topic about commercializing quantum innovations, from your experience at TQT, what advice would you give someone who wants to commercialize their quantum technology and enter the quantum market? Yeah, I think the advice would be similar to that given to other hard tech firms looking to, to launch. You know, you'll have to do your homework to determine if there's an appropriately sized market will, um, and a willing customer base for the technology you intend to develop. Um, You'll want to use shared resources to prove out a new technology and develop early ideas through the commercial deployment. And once there's a focused technology path and value proposition, then you'll want to build narrowly for that. Um, it's a good idea to connect uh, with, with others uh, outside your areas of ex area of expertise, and you'll want to invest in professional training in, in areas such as intellectual property, strategy, leadership, equity, diversity, basically all the areas that are essential for commercial success. And um, an important consideration is how to be strategic in accessing funding resources. You know, you're gonna to wanna to start with non-dilutive sources where possible and, and scaffold funding is needed. And having a carefully crafted vision that you can convey with conviction is important. It should be powerful and free of hype to attract customers and funders alike. And, and um, finally, you'll want to partner with those that can appreciate the timeline and cost involved in the quantum development cycle. Okay, that's uh, really good advice. Thank you. Um, staying on the same theme of commercialization, um, obviously, the Quantum Valley that you mentioned supports um, commercialization and startups and spin outs um, from the quantum community in Waterloo. Can you tell us a little more about the Quantum Valley and how it provides us some more support in the commercialization of quantum technologies? Yeah, the Quantum Valley is an extensive uh, scientific uh, technical ecosystem in Waterloo, Ontario. It's built around the University of Waterloo and together with the Institute for Quantum Computing, um, TQT is a central part of this ecosystem. It, this ecosystem brings together researchers, brings together entrepreneurs, startup companies, and venture capital to accelerate the delivery of quantum technologies. And the connections made here between organizations, staff, and through shared infrastructure really enable us to explore and deliver quantum technology. Uh, this thriving environment arises from a 25-year effort led by BlackBerry visionaries Mike Lazaridis and Doug Fregan. The research expertise and resources of the Quantum Valley ranges from the foundational quantum investigations at the Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics, uh, which is a leading center for scientific research, training, and educational outreach in foundational theoretical physics, to multidisciplinary research in the field of quantum information and technology development. Um, you've heard me refer to the Institute for Quantum Computing at the University of Waterloo. Uh, the ecosystem also includes the Quantum Nanofab and, and characterization facility. Uh, this brings a unique quantum tool set and a highly specialized staffing staff team. Um, and, and this connects us to the Quantum Collab, which I mentioned earlier. 
There's also the Quantum Valley Ideas Lab, a not-for-profit development uh, technology development lab that bridges the gap between academic labs and industry to accelerate research and development um, on promising quantum technologies as the basis for new products and businesses. There's also the Quantum Valley Investments. That's a, a private fund established by Mike Lazaridis and Doug Fregan in 2013 with a hundred million investment to capitalize um, commercial breakthroughs in, in quantum information science emerging from this ecosystem. And we need all of these elements, you know, to successfully innovate in quantum, we need a large, well-integrated collaborative effort fueled by these deep connections with industry and early adopters, access to the world, world leading tools and a diverse community. And you find this in the Quantum Valley. Uh, TQT works closely with the Quantum Valley organizations and broad quant quantum startup uh, activities in Waterloo. And you also know that some of these lab activities are co-located. So you, you might see um, the, the Quantum Valley Ideas Lab, some of its infrastructure co-located with transformative quantum technologies. And this enables efficiencies in developing the infrastructure and technical staffing. Uh, also, of course, knowledge transfer. It's important to recognize that um, Quantum Valley does not sit alone. It sits within the larger Canadian ecosystem. Uh, and in Canada, you see that the universities and government got on board early in quantum and have been consistent in their support. There are deep quantum strengths across the country. Uh, quantum is a recognized priority and continues to be funded as a priority. You see evidence this in uh, the national quantum strategy, which is about to be rolled out. And if, you know, five to 10 years ago, if we look at the three quantum CFER programs, so that includes TQT, which, which are the large government uh, quantum research programs funded here uh, to the tune of about $176 million, they are all focused around technology. And today the focus is finding applications. Um, maybe this is a good segue to, to mention the role of venture capital, right? Venture capital plays an important role in fueling commercialization of quantum technologies. VCs bring an awareness of the valuable use cases, and they also serve as technology scouts. And we're seeing increasing VC interest in Canada and early stage quantum technologies. Um, Canada is a strong tech sphere, which has enabled quantum to expand rapidly. So that helps shorten times to innovation. And why is it important to make these resources available to quantum researchers as part of the commercialization process? Well. Quantum technology is rapidly developing and changing. Uh, industry does not have access to all of the quantum innovation cycle in-house. So an open environment, such as the quantum collab, uh, it provides a place to explore, perfect, and apply new ideas. It even enables early commercialization. So once commercial potential is proven, then industry is pos positioned to take innovations uh, in-house and to continue the commercializing commercialization process. Um, I mean, without the access to the quantum collab resources, the commercialized commercialization process would certainly, you know, be much more expensive, it would be longer, and perhaps never be activated. Okay, that's a lot. Um, it seems like there's a lot going on there. So can you give us an example of a success story that has come out of TQT and the Quantum Valley and the support the support system that exists? Yeah, you've already heard about um, important scientific advances connected to, to quantum innovation for health. Um, for TQT, quantum simulation is a key pillar. So let, let me share more about that story. Um, this includes the development of open access shared simulation platforms. It also includes the development of new methods for uh, efficient simulation and mining for applications that are uniquely enabled through quantum exploration. So TQT researchers have advanced on all these fronts. Uh, the groups of Senko, Islam, Cooper, Roy have developed quantum simulation platforms based on trapped ions and Rydberg atoms. And today these platforms are enabling new methods development. And by the end of the year, they will begin to function as programmable quantum simulators. The groups of Wilson and Corey have developed special purpose simulators to explore multi-body effects in central spin dynamics, spin cavity systems, and parametric cavities. And Nayan Kim's group is developing a solid state quantum simulator platform based on exciton polartrons, which are hybrid light matter quantum quasi-particles. 
So these efforts are essential in closing the quantum innovation cycle and delivering new insights into materials, but we don't have to wait for a quantum simulator to see commercial success. Uh, related research that has directly led to new innovation includes uh, the world leading methods to benchmark quantum protocols and the formation of quantum benchmark, a venture backed startup uh, that was acquired by Keysight. Uh, the tools they provide improve quantum hardware performance and help to overcome errors and improve the quality of qubits, not just the number of qubits. Oh, that's great. It sounds like there's a lot going on. Um, so looking at the time, I think we'll end here. And I'd like to thank you for your time for joining us here on Dead Cat Live Cat. And just before we sign off, um, usually the interviews end on a bit of a lighter note with a lighter question, something like, what's your favorite movie? Um, I'd like to take a different angle and ask which quantum hype statement would you like to see disappear from headlines? <laughs> hmm. Well, while there are many speculative proposed applications of quantum technology, big data comes to mind. Uh, a more powerful question might be, where are quantum technology applications that are ahead of the hype? Um, and here we might point to the broad importance of quantum simulation um, or addressing um, societal problems to quantum materials um, or the wide applications of quantum sensing. There are a few places we know quantum will profoundly impact. Um, and, and just because they don't make the headlines does not mean they're not worthy of our attention. Very true. That's a good way of answering the question. Um, well, thank you very much. Um, thank you for your time. It was a pleasure to have you. And we we'll look forward to hearing more about uh, the different projects that are coming out of TQT and the Quantum Valley. Oh, thank you, Tina. Thank you, BLG and Zuber Lawler for organizing this webinar and for engaging me in this conversation. Um, really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you.